evening and welcome to Behind the Shadows. My name is Susan Finelli and I am your host and author of Behind the Shadows, a program where we go behind the shadows of what meets the eye. This evening we will be going behind the shadows of bullying. You may want to record this episode to share with lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgendered kids who need to know how their lives can and will get better. Our guest tonight is Councilman Edward Zipridge. Councilman Zipridge is an out and proud councilman elected by the good people of the borough of Red Bank, New Jersey. In an effort to improve local government, Ed has worked tirelessly on Monmouth County political campaigns to help elect more progressive people to government. He truly enjoys grassroots projects and being part of the community. Now in his fifth year, Ed serves as the Monmouth County Chair of Democracy for America, Progressive Democrats of America, the largest progressive grassroots organization in the nation. In 2008, Councilman Zipridge was elected to the Executive Board of Democracy for American, America, New Jersey. He was also elected as Executive Vice President of Development for the New Jersey Stonewall Democrats, a network of gay and lesbian Democratic clubs and individuals. Councilman Zipridge ushered through resolutions in support of marriage equality and is urging the governor to sign the anti-bullying legislation into law. He is a member of Garden State Equality, New Jersey's largest advocacy organization. Since Garden State Equality's foundation in 2004, New Jersey has enacted 210 lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgendered civil rights laws at the state, council, and municipal levels. More lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender, transgendered civil rights laws enacted in less time in, than in any other state in American history. Councilman Zipridge, welcome to Behind the Shadows. Thank you, Susan. I'm happy to be on your show. It is such a pleasure to have you there tonight. In light of the rash teen suicides among uh, the community, uh, Councilman Zipridge and I are dedicating tonight's show to all those who were so desperate that they thought their only way out was suicide. So we would like to take a moment to uh, honor their memory. Uh, and the first person we'd like to honor is Tyler Clementi. Yes, Tyler was Clementi. an 18 year old Rutgers University student um, who jumped to his death um, in September of 2010. And um, his, uh, his sexuality was uh, broadcast over the internet, um, uh, which is what drove him to his death because he had been um, closeted. It's a shame that he had to be closeted. Seth Walsh. Um, it's... He was a 13-year-old in California who died after spending 10 days on life support, I believe. Yeah, uh, Seth hung himself, he hung in, his, himself. in his parents' backyard. And um, there was also um, Cody Barker um, in uh, Shockton, Wisconsin, who also ended his life on September 13th. Uh, Seth Walsh, who of course was uh, 13 years old in Tehachapi, uh, California. Mm -hmm. and. Um, Billy Lucas. Billy Lucas in um, Indiana. He hung himself uh, in Greenberg, Indiana. Mm -hmm. And um, Asher Brown, uh, who shot himself in Houston, Texas. Um, and um, Raymond Chase, a Johnson and Wales student up in Rhode Island, mm -hmm. who um, also hanged himself in his dorm room. And, and Tyler Walsh, who thankfully did not commit suicide, but I, I, our audience, if you remember, there was uh, he wanted to be a cheerleader. Right. Uh, and they broke his arm, and he was bullied. Right, and, and when he came back to school, they they um, they threatened to break his arm again. Yes, um, just because they uh, presumed that he was gay. Exactly, regardless of the fact. And uh, we'd also like to dedicate the show to all those unnamed children out there that we don't know about, that have hung themselves or that are uh, hiding themselves in shame, uh, for who and, and what they are in life. Yeah, um, and there's a, um, one other person, Susan. Um, Aisha Hassan, who was a 19-year-old uh, uh, student who attended Howard University in Washington, D.C. Um, for her freshman year. She went home to California um, to be with her family, who were uh, very accepting um, of, of her lifestyle. But mm -hmm. she, too, ended her life um, in, her in life. early October. 
Um, and it's a tragedy that um, these children felt that they couldn't cope and that their lives wouldn't get better. Yeah. Um, and um, even when you come from a, from a family that's supportive, mm -hmm. um, to be that depressed mm -hmm. to, uh, to take your own life yeah. is, uh, is, is a real act of desperation. Well, you know, I, I'd like to challenge everyone out there uh, to put themselves in opposite worlds, like coming out of the mirror. You know, if you've seen uh, science fiction movies or Star Trek where they put you in an opposite world. And, and just think for a moment, if, if being straight was you had to live in a closet because you were straight, because you couldn't be who, you, who and what you are. And just think a moment what your life would be like if you were bullied because of the fact that you were different. Well, I can identify that with that. Yes. I, I, I lived my, the first 36 years of my life in the closet. Yes. Um, you know, I, uh, I grew up in an out of boroughs neighborhood in New York City. Um, I went to Catholic school for 13 years. Um, my high school was all guys. Um, there was absolutely no way that coming from what my parents would call a model family, yeah, yeah. that you would even utter the word gay right. um, in, in conversation mm -hmm. at home. So I hid who I was. Um, for, and I always knew from the time that I was a little kid mm -hmm. that I was different. Right. But uh, yet you married, you had a child. I did. So you were hiding behind your, your life. I hid behind what society dictated. Exactly. Um, uh, it needed to be done because, you, you know, I... You have a beautiful daughter. She's uh, very well you. established. It's, yeah, so she she's is. 21 this year, uh -huh. uh, this year and she is um, a, a very independent, mm -hmm. uh, well-informed um, member of society, and she goes to a women's, women's college um, up in New England, and she is very broad-minded. She's... Um, was she ever bullied because of who you are? I don't think she was. Mm -hmm. um, she's since she was a, a, a young teenager knew that I was that I was out, mm -hmm. and um, she grew up in New York City. So it, it, it's a, a, a different, a very very <laughs> exactly. different it's very, um, very perception different. from what you would learn growing mm -hmm. up in suburban America. And she's a very sophisticated young lady. I have to, I met your daughter, yeah, so she's you. a very sophisticated thank young lady. Uh, and you know. I'd like to thank you for being generous enough to come tonight and share your story with us. Uh, you know, although we, we want to get behind the shadows of what goes on with bullying and how uh, it can and must get better. But, uh, you know, you being here sharing your story, uh, I think, means a lot to our audience and, and also to the political realm of, of society, because I am sure there are many, many uh, p politicians out there that are in the closet. Well, let's let's take New York City for instance. Okay. Y you have four openly gay elected officials who yes. are m members of, of the uh, New York City Council. Yes. Um, Christine Quinn uh, is the speaker of the New York City Council, yes. and she is a, she is out and proud. Absolutely. And um, she uh, has also been endorsed by the uh, Gay and Lesbian Victory Fund, like mm -hmm. myself in Washington D.C. Um, you have Jimmy Van Bremer from Queens. You have Rosie Mendez. Um, they're they're all proud of who they are. Mm -hmm. They are working uh, tirelessly in the New York City Council yes. to represent their constituents. Mm -hmm. um, were you bullied as a child for being different? Were you perceived as being different even though you were in the closet? Yes. Um, it's, <laughs> it's, a, it's sort of a painful memory to go back mm -hmm. to being, you know, 11, 12, 13 yes. years old. Uh, but in school, especially in Catholic school, nobody cared about the God's love that you learned mm -hmm. in religion class. They were able to smell fear. Mm -hmm. And when you were fearful, like most closeted gay kids at right. that age, um, you get picked on. Yeah. And it's... Um, it's like shark smelling blood in the water. Absolutely. Yeah. It really is. Yeah, yeah. Um, for me, I found other ways to sort of bury who I was. Mm -hmm. um, I got involved with, uh, with a, a, a singing group at church. Mm -hmm. um, I sang in, uh, with a, with a uh, group at, in high school. And I sort of found things that I excelled at mm -hmm. so that those um, excellences in my life right. were the things that I sort of hid behind. Hid behind, exactly. Well, you know, I remember, and I, I remember it to this day, and even before bullying became out in the open, when I was in grade school, there was this one boy, Daniel, and I, I'm not going to reveal his last name, but Daniel, if you're out there, you know who I'm talking about. I'm talking about you. 
and I want to apologize to you for what happened to you in school. I went to school with him from the second grade through, I think, seventh or eighth grade. He was bullied and picked on mercilessly, even by the teacher. Yeah. The teachers even picked on him and sought him out. And I never knew why until I became an adult and realized that he was gay. Mm -hmm. He was different. He wore a shirt and tie to school every day. He was just different than the rest of us. He wore a trench coat. Um, and, you know, as an adult, I know why Daniel was different now, but I didn't know it then. And, and how he was picked on and how his teachers picked on him. Daniel, if you are out there, I, I think of you all the time. I've been thinking about you for years, and I, and I hope that you're living an open and happy life today. It's funny that you say that, because when I think back on some of the kids that I went to high, sc high school with, mm -hmm. um, we had uh, in, one of my good friends in my freshman year uh, of high school, um, mm -hmm. was obviously gay. He's mm -hmm. actually a, a very well-known uh, mm -hmm. gay celebrity mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. um, he's written a number of books. He does a radio program uh, nationally on OutQ Radio. But he was thrown out of high school. Mm -hmm. he, played, he played football. Right. Um, something happened, and the teachers made sure that by sophomore year he was gone. And it was tragic, tragic. for those of us who were living life in the closet. Living the lie. The Living the lie. Yeah. I mean, let's um, face it. Living the lie. Well, let's talk a little bit about how we can help the kids out there, how we can get this to stop. Uh, you know, it gets better. You know, the name of the show is It Must Get, it must get Better. You're very involved in It Gets Better. Uh, there's a book out there. Let's talk a little bit about this okay. and the website. And you, you attended the, uh, the conference in Washington recently. Did right. you not? I was uh, I was at a symposium with the Gay and Lesbian Victory Fund. Uh -huh. um, it uh, the Gay and Lesbian Victory Fund is a uh, is a bipartisan um, political organization mm -hmm. um, that educates and promotes gay candidacies uh, across the country. Right. Um, they are proving mm -hmm. um, since they started twenty years ago mm -hmm. that life does get better in the political arena. Right. Um, that the only way for people to, uh, to, to represent fairly equally mm -hmm. is by uh, encouraging uh, members of the LGBT community mm -hmm. to run for office. Mm -hmm. They do that um, not only through uh, a, a training program that they run with the, uh, with the Gay Leadership Institute, right. um, but they also uh, uh, help organize your campaign. Mm -hmm. um, and they have been supportive of people like Barney Frank and Tammy Baldwin, our first two openly uh, gay Congress members. Right. Uh, Jared Polis and Dave Cicilline, who are uh, the, the two most recently elected mm -hmm. um, openly gay uh, Congress members. Mm -hmm. But they've also supported uh, the city council uh, speaker, Christine Quinn, myself, and uh, various other uh, politicians in New Jersey. Well, how, how are the certain organizations that you're involved with helping the children cope, helping these kids know that you don't have to kill yourself, and also helping the parents accept who their children are? Because I think that, I think some of the fear stems from the fact that how am I going to tell my parents uh, that I'm gay? I, I remember um, a mutual friend of ours telling me a story how terrified he was. He yeah. always knew he was gay. Uh, he was forced into relationships with females growing up as a, as a teenager because that was the thing to do. He grew up in a rural country uh, environment. Right. And it's what uh, society dictates. And what, and what society dictated. And he was so afraid of what his parents, and he had to move away to become who he is. So how are we going to get the parents to understand? These are, these are your children. This is who they are, who their maker made them. Who, whomever your maker may be, mm -hmm. you know, so wh how do we get to the parents? Let's talk about the It Gets Better project. Okay. Um, as you know, I participated in, in, the, uh, in the It Gets Better project last fall. Yes. Um, my daughter called me um, after a, a friend of a friend committed suicide, mm -hmm. and she didn't know what to say, mm -hmm. um, and that was September. Uh, at the same time, all of these gay um, boys were ending their lives around mm -hmm. the country. Dan Savage started the It Gets Better project to let young people know that life really does get better. Mm -hmm. And at that point in time, that's 
um, having suicide come that close to home for mm -hmm. me mm -hmm. um, and for my partner, we said we've got to do something. Mm -hmm. So I did a little research on what was happening with the It Gets Better project and found out that not only did the President of the United States record an It Gets Better video and the Secretary of State Hillary Clinton recorded a video, but there were multiple celebrities and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And I thought, what better place for me to lend my voice right. to help kids understand that life gets better. You can run for office. Yes. And, and just to interrupt you a moment, and uh, Ed actually was generous enough, he has a video telling his life story on the It Gets Better uh, website. And what right. is the website? Uh, it's uh, it, uh, the It Gets Better Project dot org. Dot org. So the It Gets Better Project dot org. Right. And it is a powerful, powerful. Thank you. Uh, video and you know, I, I know Councilman Zipridge for many years I, and I've always known and loved who he is for many years and when I recently saw that video it really it brought me to tears it really really did because I never heard him tell his story and he tells his story openly uh, and it, it's something that you really much see so it's the it gets better project dot org, org. Right. Um, and I encourage everyone out there to take a look at that and how do they find you on that website uh, there's a, a, a search uh, box that you can just type in Ziprich Zip and, and, and my video will come up Z I P is in Peter P is in Peter R I C H correct yes and and do take a look at that uh, video it, it is uh, hot Hot wrenching to watch, uh, and I'm very proud of you that you did it's, that. Well, thank you. It's it, it, it wasn't an easy thing to do, but no parent should ever have to bury their child. Exactly. And children who identify as being gay or are questioning mm -hmm. need to understand. And I think that's what the the the, the brilliance of Dan, Dan Savage's project is that kids now can log on, mm -hmm. get the information they need, and find out. How many people, I mean, thousands and thousands of people around the globe who have recorded videos mm -hmm. um, from the president uh, down to, you know, the local city council mm -hmm. rep, right. um, along with celebrities, sp uh, ath athletes. Um, mm -hmm. Chaz Bono actually has a piece in the, in the, uh, in the book that, mm -hmm. that came out a couple of weeks ago. Well, this book is, is targeted to parents, to children, to who? It's targeted to everybody, to whether, everyone. Whether, you're, whether you're a parent who realizes that, that your child is questioning or, mm -hmm. or, or is, in fact, gay, um, to kids who need information on where to go. There's a whole section in the back of the book, Susan, that identifies the, tr the trevorproject.org, uh, mm -hmm. um, bullyinginfo.org, mm -hmm. um, the uh, um, uh, American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. Mm -hmm. um, they, are, they have a, um, let me just refer to my notes for a minute. They, a, a friend of mine actually today sent me an email asking um, me to participate in, in, uh, in the overnight.org, which mm -hmm. is the, uh, is it's the American Foundation of uh, Suicide Prevention's um, mm -hmm. project where people come together for an 18 mile walk. This year it's being um, held right here in New York City. It'll mm -hmm. start in Brooklyn and end in Manhattan. Okay. And it's the first weekend in June. But all of those raise awareness about what people can do to, if they're being bullied, where to go to get information mm -hmm. to survive. If they're contemplating suicide, they can call the 800 uh, number, which is 866-4U, the letter U, Trevor, mm -hmm. um, and talk to a life body mm -hmm. about what you're thinking. Yes. And it's, it's those types of tools that help kids stop and think before they tragically end their life. Well, what, what is happening in the schools? Are the schools taking the initiative to uh, to have programs to teach the children and and to and to keep an eye out for bullying? I mean, you know, to to see what's happening with bullying. I'm very proud of the state that I live in. Mm -hmm. um, in New Jersey, we have uh, the the state legislature in October, in response to all of these tragic suicides, um, put forth uh, anti-bullying legislation. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was very uh, proud that the that our new governor signed it into law right. early in in, uh, in in January. Mm -hmm. um, and what I did with a with a, a colleague of mine on the on the city council in Red Bank, uh, Kathy Horgan, 
Um, we issued a, pro uh, a resolution commending the governor for doing that. Right. Um, it's very, very important for the schools to have a set of rules, mm -hmm. like we have in New Jersey, right. to help prevent kids from bullying. Everybody talks about bullying as being a rite of passage. No way. It's, it's hogwash. <laughs> yeah, it I mean, is. We've all, we, we've all experienced it in one shape, manner, or form growing yeah. up. I, I experienced it. I, I was a chubby kid. I, you know, I was a chubby kid, so I was bullied, I was made fun of, you know. Right. Um, and it's hurtful. It's, it's, it is hurtful. It is hurtful. And, and that's why I eat yogurt every day now. <laughs> 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 but, but it's true. It scars you for life. It, it really does. Um, let's talk about society a little bit because there's so much going on in society that people think, well, it's okay for me to bully. Like, I'm not a sports fan, but I heard on the news that recently, I don't know if it was football, if it was basketball, whatever it was, but the uh, fans from one team came dressed up for their team, but it, it wasn't at the home team, it, it was in another city. Mm -hmm. And somebody got out of the car and beat the living daylights out of him because he was showing his, his colors for his fan in the wrong city. Right. So the example that we as adults, this was an adult who had his child in the car who witnessed this. That child just learned a lesson that day. I can beat up anyone who I think is different or who doesn't think like I do. You're right. That and was that's, the lesson. And that's what we need to, that's the type of behavior that we need to modify in, right. in, in schools. And how on earth do we do that? I mean, it's... Well, it's, you start with, with anti-bullying legislation. Right. Um, and that carries down to the schools. The mm -hmm. teachers are all educated. Um, and there are programs that are put in place mm -hmm. so that if bullying happens in school, the teacher is able to report it. Mm -hmm. It goes not only to the to the local uh, board of education, mm -hmm. but uh, in New Jersey, it gets mm -hmm. elevated to the state mm -hmm. board of education mm -hmm. and, and and addressed. Well, I think what has to happen is parents and teachers alike have to become sensitized to the signs. Uh, because we read in the paper all the time, and, and not only uh, bullying uh, for uh, people that are gay or lesbian, but I think it was a year or two ago, the, the mother that harassed a child, and then she hung herself in the closet because of some stupid right. boyfriend well, thing. Well, it was, it was actually, that, that was cyberbullying. That, that was cyberbullying. Took, took place on, a, um, uh, on MySpace. Yeah. And so the, bullying, one, of, bullying one of the parents put up, uh, um, a fake page a fake of page. this very attractive young man yes. who this young woman thought, well, you know, um, I'm in love. Right, she yeah, was in love. She and was, she in was love. infatuated, and, yeah. and it was, a, you know, a, a childhood crush. Yeah. Only to find out that the parent was leaking the information off to the kids, yes. and the kids used it against her in the school. In the school. And yeah. the and the poor, poor young woman. Killed herself. Killed herself. So there's got to be much more bullying going on out there that we don't hear. It, it comes in many forms. It comes in many forms. Bullying. It, whether it's online, cyberbullying, mm -hmm. in the form of texts, mm -hmm. uh, text messages on, on telephones. And parents really need to be aware that these things can happen. Mm -hmm. um, and that it, if their child is, is having a difficult time or exhibiting signs of depression. Yes. Um, they really need to talk to the kids. Yeah. They need to, you know, make the kid feel safe and loved um, so that it can be addressed. But the kid is, you know, it's like a, it's like a catch-22 because then the kid is afraid to talk to the parent because if, if the, the child is gay uh, and say, well, you know, I'm, I'm afraid to tell my parent. Or there are some parents out there that will say, well, if he's bullying you, you know, go, go bully him back, you know, right. go beat him up. You know, you know I, 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 you? Can, I can remember that. You, know? <laughs> you <laughs> so remember that. My dad thrown me out back that back door and saying, you know, sick him. Sick him. So, sick him. You know, uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, go out there and defend yourself. Um, the, the times have changed. Yeah. And, and parents have a, a much different relationship with their, with their kids in the 21st century. Mm -hmm. um, I think that it's a parent's responsibility to be able to communicate with their, with yeah. their child and make the child feel not only loved, but safe mm -hmm. and secure. Mm -hmm. And if they instill an open um, method of communication mm -hmm. with their kids, it empowers the kid to share that much more, whether it's hurtful information or whether it's truthful information and saying, you know, you know mom, I am gay. And actually, mm -hmm. uh, of the kids that, um, that committed suicide in September, um, I think it was uh, Asher who said to his parents, his, his mom and his stepdad that morning, that I am gay. 
and then took his own life. And then took his own life. But if the if he the could have said didn't that, didn't have before. enough time to respond to that. Exactly. If he could have said that way before. The, the, he may. He may well be with be us today. today. He may. He may very be with us today. But you know, when, <laughs> as a parent, when the baby arrives, you know, <laughs> in the hospital that day, uh -huh. no it, manual. It doesn't come with a manual. <laughs> Absolutely you not. You don't get a manual. And and you learn. Mm -hmm. um, my ex-wife and I have dealt with issues with her with her own daughter. Mm -hmm. um, and it's funny because now that she's a young woman, a lot of her friends at college will say, you know, you have three parents and you're loved to death, <laughs> but we've always talked to her about things. And, yes. it's, and it's all about making sure that she's secure. And as a, as a parent, you are very, very responsible, responsible. for making sure that, you, that your child yes. talks to you. Yes. Well, I, I see that we're getting cued, that we're running out of time. And I just want to uh, tell everyone out there, our audience, to the lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender youth contemplating suicide. We urge you, Councilman Zipridge and I urge you, immediately reach out to the Trevor Project, day or night, 24 hours a day, at 866-488-7800. Six, And for everyone else out there, keep in mind the opposite worlds and what it would be like for you to have to live in the closet. I'd like to thank you, Councilman Zippridge, for joining us this evening. Thank this you was for a, me. a wonderful, wonderful show. I wish we had more time. A special thanks to our audience for tuning in. Uh, if you've missed any of our programs, you can go to my website at www.behindtheshadows.com. And if you have a project or a topic you'd like us to talk about, you can contact me at susan at behindtheshadows.com. And until next time, remember, the brightest light shines behind the shadows.